Hey everybody, it's David Jeanette from IBM here and welcome to The Practitioners. Today, we are going to take on uh, part two of a topic that we covered in June or we, we dove into in June and it was such a rich topic, so many questions that uh, it required a follow-up and we are very glad to be here with that follow-up. Let me tell you a little bit about The Practitioners first just in case you're brand new to this, uh, it'll only take a second, and hopefully it won't hurt a bit. Uh, it's a monthly series started by the Public Sector User Group with the idea of putting together, um, uh, inviting actually, subject matter experts in various topics of business automation and have them sit in the hot seat, tell us what's happening in their particular domain, and then, for the most part, let us ask questions. It's really all about the questions, about the conversation that happens afterwards. So do please um, have your questions uh, ready. Let's go. I mean, it was really quite a vibrant uh, session last time with Dan Wiemann. You might recall if you were with us on June 8th, uh, Dan gave us the update on IBM Intelligent Document Processing, leading to lots of great discussions. So we're going to pick that up again. And in fact, most of this time, is dedicated to the questions. Um, there is a recording of the previous if you uh, want to catch it. And you can see all the recordings under our uh, YouTube uh, playlist, which I'm sharing the link here. And when I stop sharing, I can actually paste it into the meeting. And I'll do so. Um, you know, this is a production and a, uh, a it's really part of what we do at the business automation community where I was the community manager for about three years and um, still have a fond, fond uh, affection for this topic, these sets of products. Uh, but very recently it was announced that I would, uh, my whole organization would be moved over to join the tech exchange organization at IBM, which is all about enablement. It includes the community. Uh, but my job is working on uh, keynotes. There's seven keynotes for the big Las Vegas uh, kickoff of Tech Exchange, which is all about learning. It's it's not a think, which is high level. It's a, a real hands-on lab. Get your roll up your sleeves, breakout sessions, all of that good stuff. Um, keep yourself muted in the background till it's question time. Then I would love it if you come off mute. Um, so September 11th to the 14th, we were just talking about that a little bit. And if uh, <clears throat> you want to make plans, you're going to find uh, a heck of a lot to really get dig into uh, for practitioners like yourself. So that's my uh, my public service announcement for Tech Exchange. And of course, you know, I always put this up, but uh, it's it's one area that our customers look to our, our users for um, reviews, for opinions on the products. And if you were to take a, this QR code or go to these uh, links and fill out a little survey, it takes a few minutes. I believe you get a $25 gift card to have some lunch. So make it worth your while. We're talking about capture. I've got three slides I just wanted to put up to set the table again to kind of remind people what we're doing here. Uh, first is the formerly known as the Harvey Spencer of uh, uh, an associates matrix. He's the one that kicked this off. And now InfoSource has acquired that organization and uh, its talent and uh, its assets and has continued this matrix. and. We always like to see that we're in this leadership position in terms of the vision, in terms of the execution, and um, and that's something we worked hard at and, and been proud to to uh, be part of. And of course, on the table today, we could be talking about data cap. We could be talking about automation document processing. I assume we're going to talk about both, but remember, it's really driven by the questions that uh, you want to ask. Out at the Midwest User Group last week, I was very, very pleased to see a lot of interest in capture and document imaging and document processing and a lot of uh, a lot of conversations around. We had a breakout session where Todd DeBee, uh, uh, one of the uh, 
product managers of DataCap uh, weighed in and answered lots of questions. And, and we're lucky today to have with us Mr. Dan Weeme again. And to kick it off, I want to invite George Warner, the uh, president of the Public Sector User Group, to help me set the table. George. Um, thanks, Dave, except I'm the co-founder, so let's co keep it there. Um, so, yeah, this this public sector needs, you got to digitize your processes, but it starts with getting content, getting knowledge off of content so you can move it. Um, and we have spent too much time in this arena. We have people on the call here who will tell you that they don't have that capability and it takes 100 FTEs to move data from one system to another. This is crazy. There's the big issue right now in the public sector. There's no staff. People are not coming back from from COVID. People are retiring. New York State is down 12,000 employees. 25% are eligible to retire in the next four to five years. So that means services don't get delivered, which means we need to automate. But that always backs up to things that come. Information's coming in on paper. How do you get it off paper and digitized? Um, say hello to Rob Sheehy. He's my data cap expert. Saved my bacon more than once. Um, and Mike and Chuck, you want to chime in about your needs for data cap or or content ingestion? Um, this is Michael. Uh, you know, we've been on a long journey to get data cap implemented. It's now fully implemented. Capture is gone. Um, and now we're really starting to look forward at other things like ADP and other automated processing. So this is a very timely topic for us at the state of Minnesota. And this, this Chuck, so, um, I'm not allowed to say that data cap word, so I won't. Um, but we are super interested in ADP. Um, we were a BACA customer in the cloud um, and had built some processes around that that are now not working anymore. Um, so we're trying to understand, you know, how to move what we had been doing in BACA to to ADP and, and hopefully that'll be a much smoother, more integrated process than what we've built on our own. So really looking forward to how we can do some of that stuff. And leverage that product set as well. Two very interesting perspectives right there, Dan. And I see Dan has brought a friend, not a goat. Yeah, he bro he broke in. He figured out the <laughs> way back into my office. Hey, Rob she can you take thirty seconds and tell us where Data Cap as a service is for New York? Or not? <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, yeah, so Dan, thank you for coming back. I, you're still the guy who saved, who saved my bacon a long time ago so I could learn data cap. So, uh, and since then, Todd has done great, great bringing it up to speed. So, what's new in data cap? And let's have that whole discussion between that and integrated processing, because that's the next step. Everybody wants to say AI, but folks, we're still back trying to digitize processes. So how do you, what do you want to start with? Because I, I think there were some questions. Do you want to start with the questions? Yeah, I've got a bunch of questions lined up, but I thought one thing you did say in June was that there would be a, a release uh, and maybe you could just tell us, okay, has it happened? And, uh, you know, what's just the latest yeah. update? Um, I know you're also just back from vacation. You look quite rested and uh, <laughs> happy to have you back here. So uh, thanks for being here. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so so it, it was released um, end of June, uh, released 2301. Um, it, we, we got everything we had anticipated released. So I'm really, really happy and proud about that. Team worked really, really hard. Um, I actually wanna, I can actually show you a couple of things. I think that'd be a lot, Cooler. Uh, I'm not going to show you a, um, like a demo of processing documents and stuff. I don't think we'll have time, but 
but I can show you, uh, I mean, I've got, I've got two systems up. I got the, the full ADP system up and I also have the, uh, cause there's a lot of data cap folks here and I've got the, um, the ADP, uh, extension or the add on for, for data cap. I've got a small container up and running. So you can see the difference between the two. Oh man, uh, I would love to see something rather yeah. than, uh, be I think it'd be pretty cool time. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> I can do that. Uh, so we, again, we let me see here. Let me pull up the. Um, I don't want to go through the PowerPoint again. No, I don't uh, know if you need to. The recording exists. Let's move forward. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm thinking, right? So um, let me um, let me start by running this up here. Is the right screen? Yeah. And if you, uh, as you think of questions, the, the things that are pressing in your mind, put them in the chat, and then we'll we'll uh, address them when Dan's done. Yes, I'm gonna open the chat here so I can also. Okay, I, I want to say a quick hello to the Netherlands tax office. They've they've started to join us quite steadily. So, oh, very nice. international folks. All right. Uh, close this again. Move that over. Um. So there's a little bit of a difference between. I lost my other screen now. Uh -huh. There we go. There it is. What are we looking at first? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get my screens lined up here. Um, there. Actually, it's easier to do it that way. There. Okay. So on the left side is a full ADP system. On the right side is a small uh, container. This the the small version of of ADP that we talked about last time that you could connect with with DataCap. Um, on the surface, it's almost the same. The big difference is you're, you're seeing here, you're missing data standardization, document retention. The reason it's quite simple is there's no file net backend to the ADP container. There isn't, it's a service. So when you call it with data cap, it does its thing. It returns the data back in data cap and it terminates. It doesn't need to hold the documents like we did in the prior release or, or in the full release of, of data cap, uh, ADP. <laughs> Getting my names confused. But in the, the full version of ADP, um, you do have a file net backend. So it's storing your documents in process. Once you complete a document and the extraction of a document, it's going to store it in the file uh, uh, repository and keep it for as long as you have the document retention set for 30 days, a year, 10 years, whatever it is. So that's really the difference between the two. The other difference that you'll notice is a little bit further back is you don't have the full cloud pack stack. Uh, you can't, you don't have uh, business applications. This is where in ADP, you would create yourself uh, a runtime application. So that's where you would say, all right, I want my users to process uh, documents in ADP and I wanna use the ADP verification screens in order to correct the data. That happens at in the runtime uh, components of, of ADP. That's not part of the small container. A small container, again, it assumes you have all that in DataCap anyways, right? DataCap's got the ingestion, it's got the verify UI, it's got the export to file net, it has all of that. So we removed all of that to lighten the, the, the containers. Um, I don't, unfortunately, have the, if somebody's gonna ask, what is the architecture look like, the size of the containers? I really should have thought to bring one, I don't, um, but we do have, um, pre-sale support that can certainly give you that information. Uh, we also have uh, that, I believe, on Seismic now. If it's not there, it's gonna be there soon. Uh, but it is much smaller because we removed some of those things uh, that weren't necessary for, for ADP-like containers. The cool thing is, is instead of having a, this big, large open shift environment, you can install this in Docker. I've had a couple of my tech guys install this in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's super quick to install because it doesn't require all of that background, all of that open shift overhead. Um, so those at a very high level, those are, those are the differences. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just spend a little bit of time in the, the small container and show you some of the new stuff that we've done. Um, under the configure tab now, you have the ability to import and export projects entirely, uh, which means that if I build something and I train the system on a certain doc type and you need it, or you wanna just uh, move it from test to uh, production, you can export an entire project and import it into another system. During the import, it's going to ask you uh, if you want to overwrite 
the project or if you want to merge them. So it's very, very flexible in that regards. Um, bear with me for a second. Okay, so he broke in, but now the dog wanted to get out. So, sorry. Um, the second thing that we have now is we've introduced additional OCR engines. Uh, this is the traditional OCR engine. Uh, we've added a secondary OCR engine, which was built by IBM Research. You can turn that on and off very simply like this, just with a switch. Uh, the reason we have two is we go with this engine one um, for 99% of the documents. If a document has a, an issue, a low quality document, it's not coming, the quality is, is very low, engine two kicks in because it was built to handle really poor documents, uh, bad photocopies, uh, very noisy documents, things of that nature. The other thing that engine two from research does is it allows you to enable handwriting. So if you turn on handwriting this way, it will uh, go and do full page handwriting recognition. Uh, right now it's limited uh, as it's a preview action um, the performance isn't where we want it to be, uh, and it's only supporting English at this, at this time. That's why it's a preview action, uh, but you can certainly play around with it and see the results. Um, you can very easily turn those on and off. A related uh, component that we've added is a substantial number of additional languages. They, you'll notice, though, if you uh, turn on... Uh, engine 2, the IBM OCR, you're not going to have these selections here, but if you only use the, the primary engine, you have the ability to add any one of these additional uh, languages. So uh, does this one have? Yeah, this one has, has Greek. Um, yeah, so it's the latest build. Um, so you can just select the languages that you want to use and uh, it'll process your documents. So those are pretty cool. Another thing that we've added is uh, an ability, it's support for a webhook. Um, if you have an application other than, say, DataCap, you want an application to send a document to ADP, and you want uh, to be notified when the, the document is processed. Say you're sending a lot of pages. You're not going to want to sit and wait for the documents to process. Uh, you can configure this to call back uh, the application and let it know that, hey, your documents are ready. You can come pick them up. So that's, that's a new thing as well that, that can dramatically improve the performance of overall. Um, at a very high level, these are the changes I can show you from here. There's a lot of things uh, that we talked about in the last call. I don't want to really want to repeat all that stuff, but from an accuracy standpoint, the table extraction is substantially better. Um, I can show you some of the stuff um, uh, that we've done with, with tables. I think I've got a data cap uh, environment up and running as well. So, so the tables have, have dramatically improved, and that was a really sore point for me, uh, as well as any of you who have tried it. It... Um, it needed work. So now we've, we've, it was a giant leap forward. We still want to do a lot of things with tables, uh, but it's able to capture uh, the majority of the tables that I was concerned with. So I'm really happy with that as well. Um, so other than that, uh, I guess I can show you from a data cap perspective what that kind of looks like. Um, yeah, that'd be good. You know, and as you go over and set that up, you've been look, you've been in this business a long time. What is your uh, thoughts on the evolution of OCR and the effectiveness. I've heard people say, you know, what it is today versus seven years ago is an enormous change. Do you agree with yeah. that? I totally agree. Totally agree. So, well, there, there's two. The one of the biggest things that I struggle with uh, in in talking to folks, both internally at I, within IBM as well as externally, is um, the difference between OCR and extraction, or recognition and extraction. Uh, they are often misunderstood uh, or, or incorrectly defined. So I, I look at this as there's two components. There's recognition. That's the OCR engine. What character is this? Is it an A, a B, or a C? That's recognition, right? Um, handwriting recognition, machine print recognition, different languages. Uh, it's really a character-based recognition. Um, I'm not going to get into words and other things like that, but uh, at a basic level, it's, it's character recognition. Then you have uh, extraction. Extraction uses the recognition results, the characters themselves, to try to figure out what value you're looking to extract from your document. So there's those two things. Both of those have had enormous improvements over the last, well, five years, uh, and it's it's growing exponentially. The quality of the OCR engines uh, is is much better. Um, do dirty documents are coming out now with very clear 
um, uh, words. Uh, the extraction using AI or other methods is becoming much more uh, accurate, uh, easier to use. Um, so, so there's been, and, and it's and it's accelerating, uh, and it's it's honestly it's hard to keep track of, right? We're constantly updating our engines, constantly updating the the uh, the AI engines that we use as well in here, uh, because things again are we want to make sure that we are. That's why it's one of the reasons the tables are doing so well, right? So we're we're leveraging some of the newer techniques and technologies that are available. Cool. Let's see some tables, and then we'll throw it open to the. Yeah. So, so this um, this is just an application, a very basic application that you you can you can download. I think it's on GitHub, um, and you can um, without pre-configuring DataCap, you can make a call to ADP with a single action, and says, "Here's my server. Here are the credentials. Here's the project I want to go up against." Upload a document. It'll send you the JSON back, and it will create the fields for you. Um, you can create, for those of you who are familiar with DataCap, you can create the DCO fields at, uh, in advance and apply uh, validation rules to them. Or you could just say, hey, just whatever ADP says exists on this document, create those fields. Um, so I think in this case here, I have all these fields pre-created because I wanted to run some extra uh, validation and, and, and uh, actions uh, on these things. But this is, this is information that's coming back uh, from ADP, right? So this is a bank statement, identifies the doc type. Um, it pulls the information I care about. It pulls the line items, uh, the value, value. I see here there's a, okay, that makes sense. It's the first line item we got tripped up on this one here. So this is where you would want to put some validations, just like you would normally for, for some of your data within, uh, within ADP and, and data cap. Uh, and then you got, you know, it continues. Now it's going to run through, um, uh, let's see, is this a good example? Let me see if I can find one that has... Yeah, so here's here's a good example, right? Um, this one's a, a two line line item. So whether it's a single line or a double line um, description, it will it will capture it a lot more accurately now. Uh, it 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 does it does a lot better. And in the training of the system, you have the ability to not only where in the past you could only say, hey, there's a table here. Here are my headers. Now you can say uh, you can give it. I think it's three or is it four sample lines. It might be four, but you can annotate individual lines in the table itself to help the system understand, well, this is where the lines divide. They can be single, they can be triples, they can be doubles. So you can give it some examples. It'll help it understand the, the table better um, and it will extract it more accurately. It's also going to go uh, onto multiple pages. I don't know, is this a two page? I think it is, yeah. Let's see, does it go to a second page? Uh, no, I don't have that on right now, but you you can... Actually, is it? Yeah, if you were viewing it in Navigator, you'd, it would pop to the second page. Yeah, okay, thanks, Scott. Yeah, I just, just started playing around with this this morning. Um, yeah, but it'll do multiple pages now. It'll combine the tables. So if you're, like Scott is saying, if you're a Navigator, it'll as you scroll through the line items, it'll automatically change to the following page. So it's a little easier from, a, from an operator perspective as well. All right, so that's that's the data cap integration. So the nice thing about this is I don't have to sit here and create fingerprints or endless number of locate rules. Uh, all I got to do is go into ADP. Uh, I do the I create the document type. I, I do the training for the 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 um, I create the fields, upload some documents, do some annotations with an ADP. It learns a lot faster now. It starts to recognize documents it's seen before. It starts to build patterns and understanding of the documents very quickly as you continue to add documents. Uh, and then eventually, when you're happy with it, you uh, uh, you connect to it from from DataCap, and it will return the the values that you've um, you've told it to extract. Any questions on this? Let me. I'll actually do some questions on the chat here. Um, uh, Dan, I have a suggestion. Yes, Kim. Um, the way you have it now, you have to run uh, classification and recognition in one swoop. You cannot separate them, right? Correct. I have seen a need for separating them, so just keep that in mind as you go forward. You know. Yeah, that's we're we're starting to call that like microservices, whether we're using okay. the term correctly <laughs> okay. or not yeah. is a <laughs> different yeah. discussion. Yeah. But yeah, we want to be able to at some point have say, hey, um, what document is this? 
Here's right. the OCR. I've already run OCR. What document is this? Mm -hmm. Or just run OCR or just tell me what document type it is. Right. So we want to be able to offer uh, smaller chunks of services through the API. Uh, I, I, I don't have a timetable for any of that stuff, but that's something that, yeah, Kim, you're, you're absolutely right. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Good. All right. That was all. Thank you. Okay. Um, for licensing models per page and so on, um, there's a question there. Uh, from a licensing model, this is going to be sold uh, per VPC. So it's not a page count or per user. Uh, we're going to be selling this per VPCs. I can't give you details yet because unfortunately, I was hoping to get all of this done for June. Um, the, and I'll, we'll take the blame on the product management side. The, the, the technology is ready. The product management component is not. Uh, we are behind. Uh, we still have to create uh, uh, some of the um, uh, well, the pricing models, the you know the the, the entries and the the, the the pids, all of that stuff. Uh, so we're right now we're looking at end of September before you can actually buy it. Uh, but you might be able to talk to your rep and see if you can get a uh, uh, become a sponsor user. So you get a I guess a preview of it. Uh, that may be possible. I, I can't promise that, but that's right now. That's the only way you can get it. Uh, and again, I, I I take the blame here. We're 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 behind schedule in releasing this as an actual uh, um, product. But again, the technology is ready. It's released. It's it's that's not the problem. Um, we're going to find documentation to implement uh, the runtime ADP on Docker. Uh, you can't run the runtime on Docker. Um, I, there might be a confusion here. So if I go back, is it, uh, where is my, okay. So within, um, within ADP, actually I got the wrong one here, don't I? Here, I got too many windows open. I can't find the one I want. Oh, there it is. Um, this is the small container. This is the one that you can install on Docker. It does not have a runtime. It is only to define your doc types and train on those doc types. Create the fields, do the training, uh, and then connect DataCap to it. DataCap provides all of the runtime components, the ingestion, the verify client, the export to file net. This is just the training. The designer is available on Docker. So hopefully that answers that question. If you actually want the ADP runtime, you have to get the full ADP uh, pack install. Uh, Paul asks, no file net? Correct. The small Docker, uh, because it only, is only um, there to create uh, or provide a service to DataCap, uh, there's no need for a, a file net repository. Uh, the file net repository in the full ADP stack was used to carry the documents during processing. So if you have uh, IDP runtime, well, the runtime needs to get the documents from somewhere. So we needed a, an ability or a way to store the documents that were being processed. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, that is not a use case for, for this. Um, so uh, we removed it just to save space, right? Because if we want a smaller uh, container, we have to, some things have to go. That was one of them. Um, Find a small container documentation that will be released probably at the same time as we release when we release the PID and you have the ability to purchase it. Um, any plans to enable calling out to a JMS provider such as MQ instead of alongside webhooks? Um, it's a good question. Um, not at this time. Um, I'd be curious, Matt, to investigate that a little bit. Um, yeah. Love to talk more. Um, I think web, web hooks is certainly a good first step, but we love yeah. everything around here. So what's the, what's the use case for that? Uh, personally, I just find it to be a little bit more, uh, what's the right word, um, reliable, which that's not a good word, but uh, the, the guaranteed delivery um, is really what we're looking for. And truly asynchronous instead of having that synchronous web hook call is, is what we like. Okay. It certainly it, it certainly fits the bill, but uh, what we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a, a web service for this webhook to hit, and we're just going to turn around and create a, a JMS message. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of enterprises would probably perhaps prefer just a direct MQ or a JMS integration, but webhooks work great. 
Oh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll speak to Dev about that. That we don't have that currently um, on the roadmap, um, but it, I can't remember this coming up before. So it's a good, it's a good idea. Um, table spread. We answered that question. Can we do integration from things other than Dincap? Of course, um, you can do it from Cofax. You can do it from SAP. You can do it from anything that consumes that that needs a document process. Now, keep in mind, if you are looking for uh, some sort of verification UI, whereas um, the documents uh, get processed by ADP and then they come back and some of the values may or may not be correct, right? Do you need a user interface for them to make corrections on the values? Uh, or are you satisfied just taking whatever ADP gives you and then running with that? That's really where that's gonna change. So if you don't use DataCap and you need some sort of verification client, that tool that calls ADP would have to have some way to show the values to the operator and give them the ability to change them. Now you can do that, for instance, in BAW. You can have a screen there where you can change the values. So there is integration to BAW. Uh, beyond that, it would be more of a maybe a custom. If, if there's no UI to do the ver verification, you might have to build that UI yourself. But you can absolutely call it from, um, from anywhere. Um, by container, are we talking about uh, K deployment with operators or a single Docker container with Docker Compose? Uh, the latter. Uh, it's a single Docker container with Docker Compose. Um, so I was able to install, um, well, I, I shouldn't take credit for this, but they were able to install uh, Docker on a Mac and run ADP inside that. So it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, how ADP handles document tables with intermixed noise like introductory pages, disclaimers, et cetera. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, features within ADP that will ignore. So if you have, if you can picture in your mind, if you have your table and you have the header on the next page and then table continues. Um, if the format of the table continues, meaning the fields are in the same positions on the, on the subsequent pages, it will know to ignore the footer in the header and continue with the same uh, columnar setup. So we, we can handle that now. Um, it is our first release with that, so there may be some issues where uh, we might have uh, some, some issues with that, but I've seen this work uh, pretty pretty well. Hey, Dan, you know, uh, uh, Chuck asked that question about integrating with other, uh, other capture systems, but last June, he also asked a question I don't think was answered, which was, what about adding an integration to ICC? IBM Content Collector. Yeah. Oh, what a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. Actually. Well, how, how would you, just for ingestion purposes, how would you use it? Like yeah, so uh, let me just, I promise it won't take a lot of time here. So we had we had an old process that we built around Baca way back when and wrote a bunch of our own code to, to ingest things into Baca um, and then get the documents and the metadata back from Baca. And then we used a different process to ingest them into FileNet. Um, and when we started to look at ADP, right, ADP, the bigger product, needs some way to get documents in to the process. And we already have ICC in-house. So the idea was, well, could we use ICC to get them into the ADP process? That's where that question was coming from. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'll admit I'm not, a, I'm not an expert in ICC, but, I mean, ICC... Yeah could call, I mean, it's a REST API, so you can call right. uh, ADP, right. uh, you'll get a JSON back. I'm not sure if ICC has parsing mechanisms. I, yeah, I, don't, know. I, I don't know either. So the, the use case for us is really, we have lots of stuff that people have on network shares and in different places around our organization, right? And if yeah. they mature in needing to manage their documents, they, we wanna move them in to file that, but, you need to capture a lot of metadata from the documents, right? Um, and either that means we have people sit down and go, oh, here's what this all is and and put it in a CSV file. Yeah. Or, or we use some intelligent document stuff. And... <laughs> well, if I think, ICC um... have a hook to, um, to do a call out before it ingests? You know, after it finds the document uh, no. before it ingests? I have actually had that question from a customer, and I was thinking about: Is this possible? I think you can, if you take the full version of ADP, you can transfer the document. What is missing is some kind of trigger mechanism inside the FileNet system that fires up 
a bets in ADP. And if that was built, then I think you are golden. But I don't see you. You you have to leave it in FileNet and continue there with the UI, and yeah. eventually you cannot. They, there's no back to ICC, right? You know. So uh, right, right. I mean, the, the way that yeah. we talked about it was, well, okay, ingest it into FileNet, and then, like you said, yeah, some trigger to send it to ADP. Yeah, correct. Right. Well, I mean that that yeah. that is. That is possible, right? So oh, yeah. you, can, right. you can trigger events in FileNet to so do whatever you, you want. Exactly. Next, you on, the on, uh, on create demand, uh, on create right. something, and then yeah. it does whatever ADP needs, and it. But you yeah. you're gonna get into how many documents in one batch and stuff like that. So it's not right. Right. If you're okay well, with one p one file PDF, for instance, and one batch, but it becomes ugly real quickly if it's high right, volume. Right. Right? You know. Yeah, so, it's not. It was. It's not meant. Yeah. To do the uh, processing like data cap or Copax, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's so easy to install a data cap system. I think you're better off uh, going down that route and then build the logic into data cap how you want to, you know, and right. then send it up to ADP. Whether you bring it back or not, it's not really the point. It's yeah, kind but, of like before ADP, right? You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 ADP small container is really interesting to me at the moment. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, Chuck, there's because another there's another use case that I don't I, I know I don't really talk about a whole lot anymore. Um, but you talk about ICC and you talk about file shares and just really just pay stacks of files, right? Mm -hmm. Um there is this feature that I've got on the screen now that allows you to upload um a bunch of unsorted documents. You could say, all right, well, I've got there's a you know five hundred documents on here. Um I upload them into ADP and ADP will try to classify them. Uh, without okay. knowing what they are, it'll say, hey, these are documents are very similar. So if you think uh, invoices and, uh, I don't know, yeah. medical records or something like that, right? They look very different. So it'll start to divide them into files. You can you can use the ADP to try to figure out what you have within those file shares. And potentially, um, well, once, once it's done that classification, you can group them and say, oh, yeah, these are invoices. So just move them into the invoice class. And then maybe you'll discover, hey, there's this other one that keeps coming up. Let's create a new doc type for it and train ADP to recognize sure. it. So you have the ability to do that as well. Okay. Well, Thanks. not just file shares, right? I mean, you could do it in CM8 or FileNet or anything where you have documents that were probably put in there 20 years ago with just a, you know, a yeah. document number sure. and a date, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, there's a way to discover. Um, it's a way to discover what you have out there without looking at every document individually. Yeah. Uh, it'll try to classify them, and then you have the ability to then say, "Oh, yeah. Well, that's." That shouldn't be in this pile. It should be in this other pile. But for like ninety nine percent of the documents, will be categorized um, in by similarity. Sounds good. Now that yeah. was Tomas's question, though, so I, I just rephrased it for you. Sure. Uh, yeah, they're coming in on the chat. Thanks for keeping. Uh, the so let's coming. go. Keep going here. So can we call it from CM eight? Yeah, absolutely. We did that. Uh, sending a chat. So get in the queue. Okay. Um, so Matt, we talked about uh, that. What about Hebrew support? Um, Hebrew, I don't believe we have Hebrew, but I will just make sure we do not. Uh, Hebrew, the right to left, uh, we don't handle, well, that's not true, we have Chinese. Um, we don't have Hebrew yet. Uh, the engine that we're using, I don't believe supports Hebrew. Um, and that's that's part of the issue. Um, I lost my... But on the list, oh, there it is. Uh, how does ADP handle pre-processing, like splitting documents and identifying the document doc types if they're bundled in a single PDF? Uh, well, the, the, the short of it is it doesn't at this time. Uh, you would have to split them before you send them to ADP. It is something that I have I had on the roadmap. Uh, it's something that comes up a lot. Um, we, we've we had this on the roadmap for a while. We wanted to get some other things out of the way first, but that's definitely something that I want to get done. Um, can ADP help in the following use case? If a user wanted to upload documents directly from entry template in ICN, uh, same time recognize document type and its key property to populate to format document property. Uh, I'm not sure I understand now. So from ICN, you want to be able to just upload a document on ICN and then in real time recognize it and populate it to um, well, I mean, if you're in ICN, I mean, you're connected to FileNet, right? So um, if you upload a document to FileNet, um, you can have that document sent to ADP. 
Um, I'd, I'd have to understand more what you want to do from a real time perspective here, but um, you can certainly use use that use ICN to upload to file that and then have it processed in ADP. Um, so, Kishu, we can we can have a offline conversation. Is that one? I'm not sure I, I answered correctly. Usually, business uh, definition on document type is not consistent. Mostly, it run by business process. Um, again, Kishu, I'm not sure I understand what your question is. Do you want to come off mute and explain that one, or no? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't mute. Oh yeah, yeah. So, if you want to explain that one. Yeah, I mean, so we have, I mean, so I've seen so many business processes, like uh, they have clubbed so many, like you was showing in demo, like bank statement, right? But that's not the true case. Uh, in real world, uh, business is not uh, particular about identifying the bank state and its property, rather than if it is a claim process or it's a bank, uh, you know, uh, origination process, bank loan orig origination process. They receive the document in a bulk and they're only concerned with the properties in the all different type of document to process that loan rather than which one is the affidavit, which one is the deal. They're not very much particular about the attachment. They are more, uh, you know, interested in to process the entire uh, bunch identified as a one document type. And then just the uh, process is through and they are done. Usually they imprint or, you know, stamp it their own process IDs like loan number, account number, and then lift some certain properties from the document side. And uh, and it's very uh, it's very minimal uh, effort they will do and 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 finish the process. In order to do automate that process, the challenge I'm seeing is uh, because uh, the document is, is itself is unstructured. So rather than paying attention and uh, identifying like which one is the statement, which one is the deal, our job is to mostly to send the document for manual process and and businesses are expecting some magic from the data cap uh, to identify the key values and and let it process through and but that's not the possible uh, means in terms of high success rate of automation it's it's not possible like mostly it goes to the indexing for manual verification because of the the way they are processing the document. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to ask. Like, uh, I've even seen the process, like each year of the statement, they are identifying as a new document type, like uh, statements 2023, statement. Yeah, 2020. so you wouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Well, so so there's, there's I think, two parts to this conversation. There's um, the versioning of the form, like you're talking about. I think uh, the best example is a government form, right? Let's say, Every year, there's a new, I don't know, W-2 form, there's a new whatever form, right? Every year, they'll have a different revision of that form. Do you need to create a new doc type for it? Probably not. Uh, the system, you shouldn't. Uh, the only time you would create a new document type is if the, the family of fields that are expected to be read on this document is completely different. Think uh, a W-2 versus an invoice, right? That makes sense to split into two different document types because the, 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 the fields you're looking to extract are completely different. And you couldn't train AI well if you just mixed a bunch of documents because the fields, you know, the names will look, the, the, the name fields will be different, the phone number fields would be different. Um, it's just laid out differently, the aliases are different, um, and, and the system's gonna get confused because you're not training it on one thing, you're training it on just noise. So it, may, it would make sense to split into uh, multiple doc types. In a situation where you're talking about, um, I'm applying for a new mortgage, I'm sending you 10 different documents, uh, you know, income, uh, investments, uh, my loan application, whatever, my ID, uh, and I'm sending you that as a package. Within ADP, you can create a batch and keep all those documents together. But again, to my earlier point, an ID will have very different things than uh, a loan application, right? So you still would want to have them identified correctly because each document is going to look for certain fields. And if you don't have those fields, let's say, for instance, you want to say oh, there's 10 different types of fields for a universe of 100 potential fields to extract. The system is expecting those 100 fields to be there. So it's going to start looking for a social security number on an invoice. 
and it's going to look and it's going to look and it's going to look and it, it doesn't want to let you down. So it might say, all right, well, look, I couldn't find something that's social security number, but I found this number here that might be what you're looking for. So you're going to end up with a bunch of fields that don't make any sense. That's really why you really want to be able to classify the documents correctly so the system can learn and extract the data the way you want it to be extracted. I'm sorry to just a one last cross question. So, uh, you know, when it comes to the volume, for example, see, I, I, I'm processing 100,000 document in a day in, in a 0.001% of failure uh, rate. It is still more than 3000 documents sitting in the blast for the verification and I have only two to three uh, operator who can look into it. So uh, the challenge here is, even though we do the uh, provide the perfect system, they, they will uh, bond to fail, uh, you know, in, in terms of classification, recognition and uh, and and that's where uh, you cannot just blindfold and just send everything to the, uh, you know, uh, to the file destination archival, for, for example, file net. So uh, my 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 chair, my what I'm trying to say is the easiest way to solve solve that either the during in the time of ingestion uh, and the user should be able to pick the right things and and let it process through, or through like uh, using ADP. Uh, for the, that's why I've asked the question if they wanted to upload directly with the new uh, nifty features like a drag and drop and all that. So mostly user now is nowadays doing that. They're taking the files and just dragging and dropping where from the email inbox or from the, you know, their local desktop scanner. Yeah. If we are able to do <laughs> achieve certain, uh, you know, um, uh, level of accuracy there, so we can bypass this whole process and, and, and make their life simpler. But I, I don't know if I agree with you there, uh, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Maybe I'm, I'm not, uh, and we're going to run out of time here, so I'll have to keep going. But um, right now, the, the, the use case you're describing is a touch on every one of those 100,000 documents. You're guaranteed a touch. Now, if it's an upload, uh, then you're going to say it's an upload, it's an ID card, it's an upload, it's a loan application. You are not only touching each document, but you're giving metadata to every single document. It's not, and the misconception that we often see in, in, uh, in uh, IDP is um, humans are more accurate than the system. And that's, that's, not, that's not an actual, that's not been proven, right? Uh, what happens is people make mistakes, right? You've been at this for six, seven hours, you're tired, you, uh, there's a drop down list of doc types, you accidentally select the wrong doc type, that document now is going in a completely different direction. Um, we found that it's always better to just let the system, train the system properly, let the system do the majority of the lifting, figure out what document type it is, uh, figure out what properties they are. Uh, the operator always has the ability later on, you can say, look, if I, if I accidentally read this as an ID card and I'm looking for uh, uh, income, well, there's not gonna be income on an ID card. That can get flagged and get to a, uh, an operator. In those exceptions only, would an operator be involved and say, ah, it's a wrong doc type, I'm gonna switch it to uh, a W-2, and then it's gonna reprocess as a W-2 and it's gonna find the income. So it's more of an exception processing versus what I think you're describing is uh, pre-processing, giving the system values manually before it starts to process. I understand what you're trying to do here, but I'm not sure you'd be saving a whole lot of time, to be honest, okay? Hey, thanks, um, Dan. I think we got, we got a good one on that. This is a best practice, and I love that we get into best practices. I wanted to maybe close out with a, coming back up to a higher level. Yep. And a, an interesting um, re couple of remarks uh, before we got started, while we were sound checking before everybody joined, where George said, hey, I'm thinking of looking at uh, content services on AWS. What would be my options be for capture uh, to get documents into my AWS uh, application? And that seemed to be a kind of an interesting uh, conversation. So I wonder, what do you think about taking that on for a minute? Well, um, um, I mean, you can install a, um, ADP on AWS. Um, that it, It'll run on there. AWS is just, it's just a cloud provider, right? So uh, if you want to run uh, ADP on AWS versus your own in-house cloud, which is probably most common way of doing this, uh, that's, that absolutely can work. 
So I don't know if that's answers your question, but it is something we can do. But it was also acknowledging that data cap being a, a you know architected on a, as a Windows app, uh, it, it just <laughs> required a little bit too much uh, re complete reconfiguring re engineering. Yeah, yeah we, we're not going to move uh, data cap to a, a service based um, architecture on AWS. We just that's not in the cards. We're we're doing that through ADP. Um, you can you can still use your data cap environment and use um, uh, ADP on AWS if you want. But if that's a situation where you do have data cap, uh, honestly, I, I would just buy the, the container, um, the add on. Uh, it's a smaller container. It's easy. It runs on, on Docker. So you don't have an open shift overhead. Uh, it's small. Um, you don't need a lot of the things that you need for, um, for the full ADP. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, you, you're basically leveraging the infrastructure you have now. Your employees don't have to get retrained. They, they're familiar with DataCap, the verification UI, the scanners, all of that stuff. Uh, and you, what you're doing is you're, you're eliminating the need to build endless rules to extract your data. You're offloading all of that to your Docker container, which is uh, ADP. Nice answer. Uh, there's a few other, you want to tackle the last few yeah, questions? Yeah, let's jump in, yeah. All right. Um, uh, is it possible to extract key elements from unstructured documents uh, and populate a relation da relational database? Um, for a while, the answer would have been yes. Unfortunately, um, for unstructured documents right now, we no longer have the ability to do that. The tool we were using got deprecated. Um, so that, that's a complicated answer. There's a way to do it, but it's it's not um, it's not ideal right now. Uh, we're looking to get that corrected. Um, the, the the by the way, the product that was deprecated was a different brand, so we didn't have any control over it. Uh, are there functionality to group by a property or assign labels to documents such that I can search documents either by groups or by labels? Um, not sure I, I understand the use case here, but I mean, when you're sending documents into a file net uh, from ADP, if you're doing this through data cap, you can assign any additional property you want. You can make decisions based on properties that were lifted, doc types, a combination of fields. You can certainly do that uh, within data cap. It's just an extra role you'd have to assign and then pass that when you're passing the document over to file net, you would pass those additional properties as well. Um, uh, still uncertain on if the container handles both design time and runtime. No, the, the Docker containers is only design. You don't need runtime because we're assuming you're running it with DataCap. DataCap has its own runtimes. Again, the, the idea with Docker is we wanted to shrink the size so it's not this massive footprint. Um, and we wanted it outside of OpenShift so it has a, a wider um, support uh, from our, for our customers. So that's why it's running on Docker because it doesn't have all that stuff. So you have design on it, which is the training, creating doc types, uploading documents, training uh, on those doc types. Uh, it has that. Just a really uh, quick follow up on that, yeah. Dan. So sure. at, at runtime, this is then running on the rule runner servers. Is that accurate? The run, the well, which part? The, the data cap? Or are you talking about ADP? Yeah. So the, during when uh, when you're processing a document, you know, you did your training, etc., in ADP, but during runtime, th there's got to be a, a transition from that design time and get it installed into the runtime. And is that is that then running on Rule Runner? No, no. It's um, so you, you've got just like I have um, what I have here is I have. Come on, I have my container. This is this is a Docker instance somewhere that I'm calling. OK, it's it's on the IBM network somewhere. Uh, IBM. Sorry, this is my data cap environment. Data cap actually makes a call to this container and gets the data back into data cap. This can be anywhere. It's it's not it's it's not inside your data cap instance. It's not running on rule runner. Now rule runner it might be the one calling the processing step, for example, which is where this ADP stuff is happening in this application. So rule runner is running processing, but inside that processing, it's calling that action. It's calling the ADP server and saying, "Here are my documents. What do you see?" Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if my personal opinion, I would say that the container is part of the runtime as well. Then it's just a very different runtime than the traditional ADP. Runtime. Okay. Yeah. It, it has just... it has an engine um, for for runtime, and it has has a design time UI. Okay. Yes. Perfect. That that clears it up. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for uh, for helping me uh, <laughs> with those. With those. Well, that's what these conversations are about: getting to clarity. So thank yeah. you. That's nice. 
Will TM Web sunset in the future? No. Um, no, that's a short answer. Um, However, there's a, a wrinkle there. Doesn't it run only on uh, some old Microsoft browser? Uh, IE? No, we we certified newer ones. You, you, okay, good. Yeah, we're not we're not sunsetting it. Um, uh, I'll add that we never actually run out of time, as George has. <laughs> Apparently, we're not running out of time. Okay. Uh, so when is the Docker version available? Um, so I just want to reiterate that the technology is ready. It's we have all of that um, the, the the installation instructions, all that stuff is all in, in is all written, ready to go. Uh, what we're missing right now is the stuff from my team. It's the stuff that um, allows you to buy it, uh, which is silly. I know the technology should be the hardest thing to do, but unfortunately, we we um, we tripped on our own feet, I guess, and we uh, are late in releasing the product ID that you can buy, the, the running all of the final um, checks to make sure you know the the whole IBM things are in order. Um, and right now, uh, I've got it on the fast track, um, but it's it's probably not going to get done until mid September. So that's the the goal is for it to be ready before the end of the quarter. Those are my those are the orders I got from the people um, way above me. So we're 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 working on it really really hard. So it I apologize for the delay. It takes a big man to own up. So just see that it doesn't uh, happen again. So thank you. I got to admit, we we uh, yeah we messed that one up. Hey, there's so, one more question about that really combines ADP and data cap, and let's call it the last question for this particular session, and 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 then you get the final word, Dan, as well, and maybe George will have last uh, a last say too. But I believe data cap can be used independently for some document types, and yet the integration for ADP with other document types is that a correct assessment? The the that's what I like about this integration because within data cap you can decide what you're sending to ADP. Right. So, for instance, if you want to do uh, check processing along with forms, well, ADP won't do check processing. So you can do those in data cap. You can absolutely say, all right, well, this is a check uh, in data cap. So we're not going to send it to ADP. We'll process it internally, but we're going to send this other document to ADP. It's up to you. You can configure it to send whatever you want. See? All right. Cool. A lot of thank yous coming in, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. You're George, welcome. Any last word, George, for uh, for Dan? Just let make sure everybody knows we're going to keep doing the practitioners. This is good stuff. Um, you can tell all the questions that still need to be resolved. As you have ideas that you would like to be hosted on this podcast, please send them to me. We'll see what we can do. And um, yeah, those of you going to Vegas, make sure you catch up with me. And let's see what we can figure out together. But Dan, once again, thank you. Anytime. Appreciate your, your your guidance. And really, in the BA stack, what else do you guys want? Generically, what else do you all want to discuss next and kick around? A lot of stuff out there. I know everybody wants to talk about AI, but... Have you done any sessions? A lot more process. stuff to do before that. Have you done anything on process mining yet? Nope. Okay. That might be something you want to put on your on your list. Yeah, so you certainly could. I can get the experts. Uh, and thank you to our expert today, Dan. We may for uh, taking us deep into data cap and ADP. And uh, you know, you can always find George on the community, the BA community. If you don't have his email, he's very easy to find there. And so hit him up with some ideas. I'm also on LinkedIn. Send me a note there. He's everywhere. So anyway, thank you very much for uh, joining us for today's episode of the practitioners. We thank you all for your efforts, your passion, your hard work, and uh, and your and your curiosity. So hopefully today was helpful. Thank you, and we'll thank see you in the next one. Everybody.